Hello, hey, welcome to the Building Blocks of Bass. My name is Bob Debu. Very special guest, Mr. Ruben Rogers is here with us today. Hey, Ruben, how you doing? Wow, I'm doing um, great, Bob. How yeah. you doing? I'm good. I'm a little. I'm a little cold, actually. I'm a little cold. How are you? <laughs> I'm not cold. I'm in the. Uh, I'm on the island of Anguilla. Oh. Fortunately, this is where my father's from, so uh, I grew up on the island of St. Thomas. So, uh, just neighboring island, and fortunately, I have a, a home here to kind of nestle during these weird times, right? So, I'm here for just a couple months before I get back to crazy United States and what's going on up there. So, <laughs> so you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be heading back to the states in a, in a couple months, a few months, you said? Uh, probably in a couple of weeks. I've been here for about a month, a little over a month now. So, uh, not doing much music, doing some practicing, some 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 listening, but uh, doing everything else. But really dig in. So it's it's really good to 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 share this this time with you and get back to some bass and, uh, and and share some thoughts and 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 also learn from you. You know. Oh please, yeah. No, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. This is very cool. So yeah, 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 um, brother. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is the first time having a guest on too. So it's the inaugural, you know, guest of the building block. Well, we, we're learning this together. We're learning <laughs> we're this together. Gonna, it's going to be a well-oiled machine by the six, 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 six or seven time we do it. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so can yeah. I start off by asking what uh, what base do you have there? What's the what? Oh, this base. Oh, well, I mean, because you know, uh, I wasn't able to bring my base here because it's eighty-five degrees and and small planes and all that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, over the years, I've actually kept this instrument here. Um, I have a couple of these instruments. One I, I keep up in the States and one I keep here. Uh, I have a nice Tacoma acoustic electric bass. So uh, this, the one that's, that's one in the States, this one is called, <laughs> actually it's called Breed Love. I don't need okay. It's something I bought some years ago so that I could keep here because it's really humid and uh, these instruments are very temperamental, and I found out that this one can hold its its thing, you know, instead of you know, the strings get high, and you know, you don't have to do too much adjustment. So anyway, cool. I like it because it's obviously it's acoustic and electric, and I don't have to plug anything in. I can still hear it. You know what I'm saying? It's this yeah. big, big, beautiful sound. I've played it. I've played these basses a couple times, maybe over the years, and some live gigs, but very, pretty much a, a practice tool for me most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope you can hear it. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful tone, these instruments. I, I just like them a lot, you know? Very you know? cool. Yeah, it yeah. sounds great on my end, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, right. I see we've got some people watching now. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. If you're just tuning in, we're, this is the Building Blocks of Bass, with special guest Ruben Rogers. I have to share right. really, really quick. Everybody needs to head over to openstudiojazz.com. And check out his course, the jazz. Oh design. boy! Basics. Look at that ugly picture. Oh, Ooh, I love this picture, man. You've always got the two bases. You're like, <laughs> like I'm up in the middle of this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> My two little babies. <laughs> wow. But anyway, yeah. but it's a beautiful course. Definitely, you got to head over and check it out too. So it's it's got a lot of great great knowledge on that uh, on the course, and I really mm -hmm. dig the course too. And it, other things too with uh, the Peter Martin trio. Mm -hmm. uh, playing with Gregory Hutchinson, doing some trio, talking about how the trio works together, different feels. Really yeah, I mean, great. yeah, it's 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 interesting how things have come so far. I mean, when we did those videos, so it seems like so many years ago. I don't even know, maybe five, six, six years ago, and how Open Studio has kind of grown since then. <clears throat> um, and uh, it was anyway. Those those guys, Peter and, and and Greg, are some of my best friends. So it's it was really just like just hanging out and just playing music and talking crap can't be, can't all day, bad. every day. <laughs> it's so just having really a good time. Easy. No yeah. doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Beautiful, no doubt, beautiful. You know? Well, it, everybody Take, that's here, here too, please feel free to leave comments, questions, anything like that. We're checking in as we go, and especially towards the end, we tend mm -hmm. to, to go down the list and interact mm -hmm. with a little bit more people in the live chat, so. Okay, oh yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. Well, Ruben, shoot, shoot, anything, teach us, teach us. you want to talk about today? So we well, have you. Huh? Please, please, please. Well, I mean, no, two, five, ones. <laughs> you know, so it's funny. A... I have a question. So what, what, what was the, um, what was behind the two, five, one, the minor two, five, ones, not, not, and not the major, maybe because we assume that everyone knows, knows the majors already, uh, the major two, five, ones, or tell me about that. 
Right, right, right. So um, t today's topic was really born out of a viewer request. Actually, a few people um, have asked about how do you walk over minor 251s. Huh. And um, in regards to the major 251, surprisingly enough, that's not really come up that much. I mean, we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about, you know, using chromaticism and using, of course, chord mm -hmm. tones and scale tones and things like that. Right. But I think, mm -hmm. there's, I think there's a lot of mystery behind you know, the chords that are happening in a minor 2-5-1. Okay. Uh, I, I remember it taking quite a long time for, for me to right. finally get around to figure out, well, what really works aside from playing the root and the flat 5, and then there's a right. minor 3 right. in there. Well, right, right, right. What else is there, you know? Well, I mean, the biggest thing is that, right? I mean, already that, that flat 5 chord being a 2 <laughs> is, 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 is kind of daunting. It's funny, I, I never knew what that actually there's such a thing as a, a minor a two uh, sorry a two five minor progression I, I didn't think of it that way i never thought oh. i've always thought two five ones was this and was major and like anything with a flat five that starts with flat five as a progression it just happened to be its own thing i don't know that's the way i've always <laughs> always thought about it you know that and and looked looked at it as um just really the tones in in the chord, like uh, really knowing what the chord tones are in A minus seven flat five, what the chord tones are in D seven, mm -hmm. and then you know, of course knowing what it is in G minor seven or G minor major seven or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's I mean so it's it's interesting how it's I don't know it, to kind of pigeonhole it like that this is two five ones because it's all. It's all chords, right? It's all chords, and and finding that relation, you know, that goes with all the you know, the sound of that the two five one. You know what I mean? I, I you know I, maybe I'm kind of like think, going all so. over the place right now. I, uh -huh. I, mm -hmm. Are you referring to it being like the destination? <clears throat> if we called it like a minor two five one, that just means the one is minor. The two right. could be something something, and then the the five could be something else entirely different. different and and the way the way I see it that way, the way I'm I'm looking at it that way is because. It's situational, right? I think it's sure. situational, uh, depending on what the, you know the the piano player is playing or the guitar player is the chordal instrument playing or no chordal instrument. You can figure it out. At, you know, you know what I'm saying. Sure. Uh, I mean, if I had to break it down, I mean, because you're saying so that's the A minor seven flat five. I mean, but obviously we know that people, you know, it, it could be someone who who's not. Who's not playing the two? I mean, for the purposes of this video, we're doing two, two, five, one. But even if, right? That's that's. Of course, that that's more correct. That sounds right. But I've had situations where uh, people have played different chords. I mean, a minor seven, or or, or 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 you know, embellish that chord. I mean, it takes it away from the two, five, one progression that we're talking about. But what I'm trying to get at is just knowing the sounds of the chords mm. is so important. I know you've probably touched on, on the, all knowing what the chord tones are, but like just, just knowing those notes in, in, in the, in those three chords, mm. uh, brings so, I mean, so, to me, it brings so much clarity. I mean, I think I actually said this in the in the basics course with um, the with the with the blues. As a matter of fact, uh, walking just chord tones, right? I think, uh, as far as I remember, and I mean, I mean that. So that uh, if I just try to use just the chord tones, you can make beautiful music, right? So. Sure. Clear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Like, right. Like one, three, five, sevens. And like, I mean, let's get back. Maybe we're, you know, I'm skipping ahead. But the example that you 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 sent me, like, just. Hearing Sam Jones on Autumn Leaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, if you want to even pull that up, uh, yeah. that's like classic. He's a lot that he's playing on this, on that, 
track mm -hmm. is very apregetic, right? Ap ap Why can I ever say that, that word, okay. you know? <laughs> I'm not even going to try now. I'm not even going to try now. This it's not a real word, right? This, but it's apregios. It's apregio-based, based, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, of course, he's, he's, he's going in and out, in and out, in and out. But just knowing those 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 chord tones and just knowing how to execute and play them in in in, in the right spots, finding those right mm. times to play those beautiful chord tones. Yeah, I mean it's 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 you know, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Take it no, take it away, no, Bob. That, please, please. I want to hear everything you have to say. I want to hear all of it. Oh. Beautiful. So maybe we should just uh, back up just a second. This is the building blocks of bass. Okay. Two five one. So if we were saying what a two five one is, it's kind of like we're thinking about things. Well, I can't do my screen pointing thing anymore because we gotta. But this G minor is the one, right? Mm -hmm. That's 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 our goal, right? Mm -hmm. So for for folks that are newer to this, the two would be the root would be the second note of the scale in G. So we're talking mm -hmm. about the two being an A chord mm -hmm. of some type, of any type, depending on right. the moment of the situation. Mm -hmm. The five being the fifth note of the G minor scale. So that gives us this right. G7 that's here. Just to lay our groundwork so everybody knows we're talking about two five ones and what that Excellent. means. So yeah, this is the this is one of the examples from, from the Sam Jones recording. Uh, again, this is uh, Cannonball Adderley, something else, mm -hmm. right? And we notice here he's playing, it's a two five one, and he's hitting the roots of each of these chords. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, like there, you can definitely play around with different chord tones happening uh, on beat one, beat three, but I also see a lot of directionality, like his mm -hmm. lines. You see this with great bass players, how mm -hmm. it's 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 rising and then descending yeah. too. There's a yeah. lot of there's not a lot of big jumps involved in yeah. there, and especially in yeah. Sam's lines. The great Leroy um, Vinegar told me that many years oh. ago. I don't know, great great. Uh, well, he he ended up in Portland. He he's from somewhere else. I remember I was touring somewhere, and and I, he was known to be one of his best walkers on the scene in his day you know and i asked him like what what is you know what's the some base advice that, that you could bless me with and he was like look you know when you walk in your bass lines it's like you know you're the you're the bass voice in a chorale that's the way you need to look at it always you don't you don't you don't hear you know the bass voice or the baritone voices in, in chorales jumping all over the place and whatever unless it's some you know maybe some really <laughs> uh, situational music that's, that calls for that. But uh, it's, it's li very linear. It's very mm -hmm. linear. I find also it's hard the more you know and the more technique you have to stay in those parameters and make the best music because you, 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 your, your mind is thinking, your, your hands are moving, and you, you do so many things, which is great. I think it's beautiful. But I think the best bass lines are very linear. You know, I, you know, I don't, what do you think about that? <clears throat> I, I'm in complete agreement. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, again, it's situational. You know, if something needs yeah. to be a little bit more angular or, you know, uh, you mm -hmm. know, depends on mm -hmm. the moment for sure. But as far mm -hmm. as it's like locking in and making lines that somebody could sing back. Right. You know, no doubt. That's, no doubt. I think that's a great goal in, to have in mind. You know, I tell that. To and, you. And, and the best, and the, I think the best players, know, uh, you know, know, know when to do that, when to turn it on, turn it off. Right. I think that's really what. It ends up you know, separating a lot of players from each other, knowing to make those choice um, decisions in the moment. You know, know. Sure. Um, yeah. But going back to that Sam Jones, I mean, just the just the two feel. I remember I texted oh, you that uh, the yeah. two feel that he plays on there on that um, <laughs> on the head to that. I mean, wow, I hadn't heard it so long. It was funny. I remember listening to that. Uh, I, I know I preach all these long, you know, these long notes. I remember actually not really thinking about it as much when I was first starting to play or you know explore get deeper into jazz but I remember this I used to do a lot of studio work with um this one producer guy in Boston and he was he was excellent you know I mean the, the best producers know how to bring out the best and know how to articulate certain you know things that needy or certain you know whatever. And I remember he would always tell me, okay, Ruben, on this take, remember, I need you to hold the note to the next. 
mm. to the next quarter note or the next half note. That's very important on this track, on this, you know, whatever it was I was doing for him. And that always stuck with me for whatever reason, you know? And, and I, I started to think about that in, in my jazz playing a lot of times and, and, and then start listening to recordings, you know, you know, we're gonna, you know, have an example with Ron Carter who plays the longest notes in, in the business, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And, and just realizing how, 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 how good that, that can, that can feel, you know? Yeah. But that's also, you know, take some patience. <laughs> For sure. And it's a technique thing too. I mean, to get around, right, to play right. those notes that long and connect them. Right. You really and have to be aware them. of that and practice exactly. that, you know. It'd be intentional also, right? For, be very sure. intentional. So yeah. um, thank you. Thank you for bringing, blessing me with that, that, that track. I hadn't listened to Autumn Lee's and Hank Jones. Oh, jeez. Wow. Ooh, yeah. This, this whole album. And, and if to uh -huh. everybody watching, this is the album we're talking about. Something else. Great mm -hmm. Cannibal Adderley, Miles Davis, mm -hmm. Hank Jones, Ham Jones. I mean, Sam Jones and Art Blakey. Mm -hmm. you, can't beat, you can't beat that lineup. No doubt. But yeah, no doubt. the length of those notes, I mean, so golden, mm -hmm. you know, like it, mm -hmm. it makes me think of the ride symbol, you know, that open there's that mm. attack and then the decay. It doesn't go away. It doesn't stop until you hit right. it again. Right. You know, it's not like nobody's up there hitting a ride cymbal and then stopping it to play the next note. <laughs> we don't want to do right. that. <laughs> you know, like, right. So the right. same, right. same, same type of idea. That's what I hear in there. No but doubt. yeah, yeah. when you wrote that, I was just like, absolutely. And as soon as you just saw that text, I put, up, put it on. I was like, yep. <laughs> Absolutely. That's like the longest notes ever. I know, right? But that's the same thing too. We hear about, you know, you hear that from Paul, Paul Chambers. You hear yes. that from Ron Carter, you know. Right, uh, right, right. Mm -hmm. Christian McBride was uh, relaying a story in, uh, I forget where exactly he did it, but he was, maybe it was Carl Allen talking about it, how um, Roy Haynes said that Paul Chambers was his favorite bass player mm -hmm. because he got a full note. Like nobody gives me more quarter note than Paul Chambers. So that's why he's my favorite bass player. Wow. You know, I remember hearing that and, you know, but that's a goal. You know, that's a life goal right there. But that's funny. That's, that's something that, like, Greg, Greg would say that, Greg Hutchinson, he would, he would always complain. It just, it'd be random sometimes, you know. He's like, man, this guy, his notes are too short, man. This dude's notes are too short. Mm. I, I just be like, what, 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 is, what's your obsession with? I mean, I knew in the back of my head what he's, what he's talking about, but to hear it from a drummer was always so weird, like that attention to detail to those notes. But mm. obviously, you know, I mean, obviously Roy has had much, many more years on Hutch, but like the the special special drummers have an idea of what 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 it feels and sounds like to have those those notes be sustained and 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 you know feel good you know so uh, that's 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 great to, to hear about about roy i like that that's that cool yeah yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. definitely so yeah so what we pulled in uh what i had you, usually i have examples from different recordings or different yeah. scales mm -hmm. that we practice here mm -hmm. you do any of this or not and, and everybody that's watching too of course please leave comments feel free to leave comments questions uh say hello of course mm -hmm. and uh we're glad you're here so um we have a couple more maybe we could just play this bass line Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to use the recording just because it, it would be kind of a mess to do, but uh, we could play right, this right. Ba play this bass line and see how it's working, you know. So if Please. I'm one, one, two. And right. he's heading to a C minor again. Of course, this is you know. Uh, autumn leaves, yeah. With autumn leaves, we have C minor seven, mm -hmm. F seven, B flat. Right. E flat, and then we've got this minor two five one heading home mm -hmm. into the key that we're in, which in this case is G minor. But what mm -hmm. I really like about, oh man, I love that recording that you that you hit me to the Chet Baker recording mm -hmm. with, with Ron. Right. Man, he plays some. Oh man, <laughs> it, it's beautiful. But it also immediately struck me that they're in a different key. I'm just like, oh, I've not heard it in this key before. I don't think. What, what, you know? what key? I never even checked checked that. I don't. Yeah. What key is it in? So they're doing an F minor. Which is not ah. not like a you know not like a C change or anything. It's not that no. far away, you know. But uh, yeah. but I, I put it on. It was like oh, this all automatically just has a different a different a vibe different to it. thing to it. Okay, yeah. do you have perfect do you have perfect pitch? 
No, but I think I was listening to the Sam Jones recording before oh. I put that on. And I was just like, oh, oh okay, well, immediately this is a different key. So. <laughs> nope, nowhere near perfect pitch. <laughs> well, good relative pitch. There you go. That's all but, you need to, to survive out in this bad boy. <laughs> for sure. Just keep your ears open, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the first, the first thing that comes to mind with this bass line here, again, is the, the movement. You know, we talked about that what you were saying about Leroy Vinegar, which I think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. like to hear that being part of a chorale or mm -hmm. thinking of the bottom, the foundational, you know, it's not a big, a lot of big jumps, so we don't really hear that here. But then mm -hmm. towards the, oh, I gotta do it backwards, towards the end, where he's playing on this <laughs> G minor, he's playing literally the root, the fifth, the third, the fifth, you know, et cetera, not, mm -hmm. you know, he's outlining the chord directly. Right. Um, and what I think is interesting too, is that there's so much when, uh, I would go through on this recording when I got these samples together, I went through and just was trying to find the minor two five ones. I'm just gonna isolate these, see what's mm. happening. Mm. And you know what? This exact line came up. I didn't do the whole thing or anything, but the uh, but he would repeat himself quite a lot. Played this uh -huh. exact exact line. Right. And I I I noticed that with a lot of great bass players too. Right, right, right. You know, you uh -huh. hear Paul Chambers do that at certain parts of the song or Well yeah, I mean yeah, I mean they Probably if they were again, if they if they saw this now, they'd be like, "Damn, was I doing that?" <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, you but you, you get comfortable, right? You get comfortable. You stay in your lane. You know what works. You know what I'm saying, and that's okay, right? You know what yes. works, and it, it it it's like muscle memory. It kind of like just falls right where it needs to be. It feels good. It sounds good. The notes are right. Yeah, I'm gonna keep on playing that. You know, right? Uh, we all get there. That's for sure, right? We all get there. <laughs> If it was good enough to say it once, you know, might, right. might as well do it again, right? Yeah. Why not? You know, until until, until one day somebody's dissecting your stuff on on YouTube. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. Fair. No doubt, so, man. Let's check out this next uh, this next example of a walking line. So mm -hmm. here he does a little, and this is from the same recording. He does similar things. He's hitting he's hitting the root on on the the two chord that a. What do you do? Do you say minor seven flat five half diminished? I, I do minor matter? seven flat five. I feel uh, you know it depends. Everyone, everyone's a little different, but I think Semantics. I feel like most people are. I feel like I hear minor seven flat five more than half diminished. I don't know why. It just hmm. depends, right? I think you know as long as you know what it is, as long as you know the chord, the chord tones, right? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, right, right. Yes, right. and and for and for folks, we, we we were talking about what the two is, what the five is, and what the one is as well. Maybe we should just say really quick too for for people that are watching and um, maybe aren't maybe it's not clear what we're talking about yet. But we're talking okay. about an A half diminished mm -hmm. or an A minor seven flat five. So we would have an A in the root, then a minor third, then up a minor third to the flatted fifth, so to A flat. So it's on the way towards being diminished. Right? right. If we went up another minor third, right. But we're playing the the, the minor seventh, so a major third above that fifth. So A right. C E flat. And a, and a fully diminished would be. Right. Fully diminished right. would be all minor thirds, which would right. function differently. Much different. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now the five chord, the mm -hmm. five chord can get played with quite a lot, but the basic, the bare bones. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one, three, five, seven of the five chord, which is D seven in this key, D, mm -hmm. F sharp, A, right, C, right, mm -hmm. right, and then there's well, and then there's the one. So we should say G minor, G, B flat, D, and I just think G again. That, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's funny. Uh, on on, I've seen. I've, I'm not seen, but I've. The little bit I've talked to people about the, this kind of thing, this this two five minor, uh, two five one minor. <laughs> uh, it, it it depends on the on the play. That's the other part that I'm talking about. Um, having your ears open to it, because some would go, and then it could be, it could be G minor seven flat. I'm sorry, G minor major seven right yes or that's g minor seven right, right. so it, it can it can go different places with that 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 two five you know minor two fives one so the biggest part about that's why i always say i was about 
just knowing your chord changes of just knowing the sounds of them, not just knowing what the notes are, mm -hmm. but knowing what it sounds like so that you be able to jump on it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times what I've, what I've realized too is when you're reading certain music or new music, especially there's some, you know, people are playing and, and it's on the sheet there one way and, you know, and it, it could have many versions, you know, you might be looking at the fourth version and revise or whatever, and they never got back to putting that major seven or that minor seven. Okay. But if you can use your ears and, 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 and trust that, you know, the piano player, whoever is playing the right chord, you'll be able to adjust and, and play the right notes. You know, for, hopefully you're, you're playing a big fat G and nice, you know, <laughs> nice right, group right. to help everyone. <laughs> but to, to, to move it along, you be able to hear that. So, I, I, you know, the biggest part, the, the biggest thing I want to throw out there is to really know the sounds of chords. Mm. You know, as bass players, I think we get very complacent and uh, very lazy. I, I, I'm, I'm a you know, culprit for sure most of my life <laughs> that that we, we don't know, you know, that extra harmony to really take us to the next level. You know, the, just knowing the sounds of those chords. You know, you know, G minor seven, G major, G minor major seven, you know, or whatever it is, or G minor, or oh, sorry, or G. What what is a? What, I can go. Um, if I go, uh, yeah, I'm more like sharp, sharp. That's that's G. G major seven, sharp eleven, right? Just knowing those sounds, knowing those sounds, or we know that's a that's a dominant seven. Knowing those sounds, not just the notes in the chorus, but what it sounds like, so you can be on it. You know, yeah. that's that's the biggest part. So you know, coming back to the minor seven, flat five, knowing what that sounds. You know, that's a very distinct sound, mm -hmm. right? You know, and then you got the D7, that's a very distinct sound too. And then that minor, minor seven is a very distinct sound also. You know what I mean? And just knowing, you know, and getting with a piano player, whoever, playing over and over, over and over, over and over and over, and mm. just getting it in your mind, getting in your mind. That That's one thing I always wish that I, I spent more time with, with, with you know, chordal, in, you know, chordal instrument friend who could just, you know, I could use my little guinea pig to just play and just, and I like, just figure out, how I, you know, pick out the notes or they, we, we have a game and they, they play a note and, and, you know, chord and I can guess or they can tell me, or, you know, I don't know. It's yeah, food for thought. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to, I wanted to, to ask, uh, is there, is there a, a way that you worked on hearing those chords, like understanding what it was you were hearing uh, at any point in your development, was that like a certain um, practice? I think uh, no. I think it just it just happened. I mean, I was mm. I was thrown in the fire. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? You know, most what I mean? bass players are <laughs> exactly. But that's what I'm saying. That's why we we get complacent because you know after about two weeks we got a gig, right? Oh, we have opportunities to play, right? right. And we never use those opportunities. I mean, that's not true. We uh, most a lot of players do, but I think we don't use them to the best of our ability a lot of times to really, really hone our own bass scales and our harmony and whatever, you know what I mean? Because we're, we're usually thrown in situations that that are unfamiliar to us and, and we just move on to the next one and, and it will take as much as we, we should because we're just like going from the, the bottom up instead of trying to just take something from the up here and bring it down. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, totally. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, that's still a thing. You know, I, I, I love getting like stumped when I'm playing with a piano player or a guitar player. And I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's the, the, the leveler for me. You know, I'm just like, no, nope, I, I can't hear that. What else? What are you playing? You know, I and, think it's really and, and be cool, cool to not be shy that. to ask. Yeah, that's totally. funny. And being cool with that. You know, I used to be really shy and uh, it was a, it was a time where I would, uh, <laughs> I was so cocky with, you know, with my, I had, I've always had big ears, but maybe 
to a detriment, you know, because it's nothing like someone saying, do you know this song? Mm. And you say yes, and you don't know. Most musicians would want to just strangle you, right? And you start the tune and you're fumbling, trying to get Especially as a bass player. <laughs> exactly. You, <know laughs> you don't what know mean? the root. <laughs> but I've, I've seen that plenty of times. I mean, I used to do it too until I got enough, you know, where it stares and, and mean eyes that I was like, you know what? If I, it's okay if you don't know it. You know, if you don't know it, say no, but then follow up and be like, can you teach it to me? Or, the, you know, the next you know, time. <laughs> the next or, time you're on the game, you know and, and, and to make sure you knew what you know what what those what those core tones are, you know. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, definitely. I digress. Go ahead. Let's get no, back. No, no, no. I love it. I, that's bringing <laughs> me back too because it reminded me of uh, I, I, just being a y really young bass player myself in like the DFW, Dallas, Texas, you know, Fort Worth area. Right. And uh, I was playing with this uh, sax player, and he was like, "Do you know uh, Night and Day?" And uh, I said, "I." <laughs> Being ignorant, you know, like I was like, no, I don't know that, you know. And he looked at me, was like, you should know that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't know that, just say you do <laughs> and play it. That's, That's right. what the first chord is. But I right. remember here, and I, then I heard that from somebody else too, like, you know, if you don't know it, just say you do and try to get through it. Yeah. Like, See, hmm, I mean, okay. it, it's, it's, I think it's just, it's a fine line. You have to know, hopefully know when to do it and when not to do it. Sure. The situational again. If it's a jam session, you could learn on the jam session, maybe. You know. Oh uh, yeah, that's different, right? Right. You different. know, <laughs> it's very situational, and it, but also, yeah, it just depends. You know, and you <laughs> you, you you'll learn how to make those choices, the right choice, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, absolutely, what you said is follow up, learn the tune afterwards. If you don't know the tune, right? No just doubt. go do the homework. Go listen to the recording. Something. Ask what recording to check out. You know, yeah, I think it's yeah, all good stuff. Basic, and, basic things, basic things. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know? And uh, mm -hmm. and ask ask for help when we need it. That's a you big thing for me. That's call for me. Bob, call Bob, <laughs> y'all. You got an email. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, for 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 folks watching too, you can click the link down below. Andrew's behind the scenes. We've got a link to get to the PDF of all of the transcriptions of these two five ones. Mm -hmm. We were hitting on, just really quick, I wanted to go over, if you don't know these recordings and you're a bass player, you should check them out for sure. Highly recommended. Sam Jones. This is uh, Cannibal Adderley, Something Else. Mm -hmm. We also drew a little bit, we haven't done it yet, but from Wynton Kelly's great album here, the Wynton Kelly Trio, with, oh, yeah. uh, with Paul Chambers on bass. Mm -hmm. And there's some beautiful bass lines that Paul plays in this. Just talk about and, long, and, fat, and, and, yeah, and Sam, Sam Jones is on that record, too. Is he on this one, too? Yeah, he is, he's on a few tracks. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think Paul is on a few a few mm -hmm. tracks, but but uh, somehow they, I I would love to know the story behind that. I you know it's there's something to it. I'm not sure. I, I should do my research on that. But I'm like, because I think the sessions were done on the same days or something like that. But I'm like, why is Sam on that? Why what, did he okay. could not make it? Paul couldn't make. Was he late? You know, who knows? You know, yeah. <laughs> you never different know. Different sessions pushed That's together it. into it. You album. know, you know, you can you can figure it out. But the, the one thing about that recording, this is some, you know, bass geek stuff or sound stuff, yeah. that it's the ba the bass is panned to the left mm. on that. And and I feel like I I mean I'm, a lot of recordings in those days, you know, they would pan instruments a certain kind of way. But it was where it's weird to hear the bass on the left. I mean on the left. So used to like hearing it kind of like right in the in middle, middle. Uh, in the, and we're like always in the middle, staying in the middle most of the time in in, in playing settings. So right. it's, it's, it, when uh, when I started listening to it a couple of days ago, it, I was like, oh oh what 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 something's different, you know? Oh yeah. So it's I wonder I wonder where that where that choice came from. Because you hear recordings know. like that, and it's just like, what's going on? There? You know? <laughs> it's so I, odd. I, yeah. I, it's so odd. <laughs> but uh, it's it's just a beautiful sound, nonetheless. You know. Yeah, no doubt. definitely. No the doubt. bass is super present in that album. That's for sure. Very, definitely very. Hear it. I'm not so. mad. I'm not mad yeah, at that. Right, exactly. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> this, and this is the album. This is is this the <clears throat> this is the album you were ta telling me about, right? Right. Good, uh, good Chet to, Baker. Yeah, the Chet Baker. She was too good to me. That's with Ron Carter on there. Um, yeah, yeah, he. he well, Ron always has some some interest. It was great to see. If you want to put that up? I don't know if you want to put those those notes up there. Yeah. But uh, he, it's a great uh, combination of players. 
that I feel like you don't see. Maybe it was Bob James on, on keyboards, a mm -hmm. uh, Rhodes that is, um, Steve Gadd on drums who's swinging. He's oh swing, my, super swinging! I had never heard that. Yeah, you, you had, you ever, I had heard Steve Gadd get in there, but I think Ron even put give him an extra little, mm. you know. Or he was like, okay, I'm playing around. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. He was in there, right? <laughs> Chet Baker and, and Paul Desmond. I, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe I'm yeah. just biased, but I think Ron kind of just lifted everyone to another like plateau, mm. you know, yes. somehow yes, with his beat and just the way, you know, he laid it down. Everyone was just like, okay, we got to step up, you know, but. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. And it's got that, you know, that CTI mm. type of sound to it, you know, like. I think mm -hmm. I wrote something about the, the toms even. He's got that real oh, like yeah. really close <laughs> mic. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. boom. <laughs> but that huge sound like that. I, I, I heard that and I was like, yes, this is cool. I like that. <laughs> you don't hear that in many jazz albums. So. And those, yeah, those, oh, okay. those, those little eighth notes are those Ron pull-offs. Oh, okay. Ah, that type of, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. It's weird, right? Okay, I see. Yeah. That's great. I like that. I like that. So that's... Wow. So... So uh, this goes back to you know. Did, did you want to introduce some scales that that you were talking about at all oh, to, to this? Sure, but I uh, before before maybe we do that mm -hmm. before before we went live. You were saying something I found really interesting. Mm -hmm. You were talking about you were thinking of all two five one as one scale more or less, right? Like or or yeah, definitely incorporating you know certain tones, all the tones into to. to I mean, it's move in one, in one motion or into straight, it's like directional, you know, mm -hmm. linear again, right? Okay. So when, like, that's, that's why I was kind of playing this to see, you know, if I'm my, the way I was thinking about it is right. And, and yeah, so you see. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at this whole thing as F minor seven, sorry, F melodic, sorry, F harmonic minor. That, I think that's what I said, right? So the harmonic minor is, right? right. It's a real home key. It sounds like right. real minor, like right. landed. Yeah. Right, and see, almost, almost all these notes, if I, I can start on any note, almost any note in that scale, mm -hmm. And play that bass line. Say so. So even if I start on the A flat, right? Uh, yes. That was that was. I played just the notes. In, I, mean, I played the B, but sorry. Uh, if I play. You know, yeah. I'm thinking if I'm thinking just a sound. That's also a sound. Just leading, just bring. You know, instead of thinking chord, chord, chord. Mm. You know, that's just that's just something I was. You know, I mean, maybe I've, I've heard this from somewhere before, and it's it's coming back to me. Tell you the truth, but but <laughs> but I, but just just using it that way. That simplifies it instead of trying to figure. Uh, you know. A scale on this or a chord tone you know, using just chord tone on there and it's, it's just it's re it's all relatable right you know absolutely you yeah. know um, the same and, thing would work in a major two five one right yes this was f, f major right exactly and and also and just know knowing that there's always that available tone you know it, it, going back to what you said about using some a little bit of chromaticism is like you know Right, sure. you know, just just knowing that you can use those little chromatic notes in between, but no, knowing that the, the strong chord tone 
is right there somewhere. Make sure right. you play that at right. the right time. <laughs> right, exactly. Find that strong beat. And, and if right you note. don't, know how to get out of it. Right? Or delay it, right? Yeah. You know? Beautiful. Ah. <laughs> You know, you know, sounds like Bach. You know, <laughs> that's what we're trying to make small little minuets, right? You know, right, right. whatever it is. Beautiful. You know, so you know, yeah, yeah. But no, that's really striking. That sounds to me, um, which um, mm -hmm. the not generalizing. You know, I think people do use that term generalizing or kind of playing mm -hmm. over over changes, right. which I always uh -huh. thought is like a misnomer. But you can think of this sound that we're getting to. Like mm -hmm. if a, like say if a, a, a sax player is playing, mm -hmm. they might not play like what we're saying, like one scale for the two chord, a different scale, like take mm -hmm. all this time to think about it. And then a different scale when you get to the one chord. Right, but, right. But mm -hmm. think of these different shapes all leading, really thinking about how we were getting there. Exactly. You know? And right. leave the mm -hmm. leave the two ness, the two ness mm -hmm. to the bass player. <laughs> leave, leave the <laughs> harmony, you know, like the, <laughs> leave the two ness. Right. You don't need to think about that, you know. Yeah, yeah. To, as bass no players, doubt. we think about the two, you know, we think about the five and then, right. you know, the next step is like, okay, well, what can you play after that? Right. Whereas no doubt. maybe, maybe a horn player doesn't need to think about that in those no. terms. Never, right? never. Yeah. And, you know, they're the <laughs> selfish people. They don't think about our. <laughs> and that's all yeah. the time we have for it. No, I'm just kidding. Peace. Um, <laughs> One no. thing that hung me up for a long time, and maybe this, I could actually, well, I would really like to get back to these Ron bass lines too, but I wanted your opinion on a lot of, a lot of things, of course, but this really kind of hung me up for a while when I was younger, just thinking about mm. how, to, how to play over this stuff. And now, so mm. um, I forget who told me the first time, but on a, on a minor seven flat five, somebody said, play Locrian. That works, mm. you know, like, in the modes, you know, like the preceding the one chord, that's the chord, that's the sound. So right. play like a B flat major seven scale, but as long right. as that's the root. Right, right, right. So you get right. that type of sound, right? Right, right. Which makes a lot of sense because that is, it's, it's kind of, it's G minor, that's the relative minor of B flat. No doubt, you really no doubt. Really nerdy, theory nerdy stuff, you know? And then get in there, I, dive in and dive in as much as you can. And dive as much as I mean, the more knowledge you have, the more you know you know to just hold it back, spit it out, hold it back, spit it out, you know, make those situational choices, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the main thing. And oh and I'm the okay, go sorry, go ahead. See, that's this is the one Locrian number two. I don't even know if I ever heard this before. <laughs> right. And I was just gonna say this is one that like that mm -hmm. uh I, mm -hmm. I, again, I forget who told me about this, mm -hmm. but they're like, oh, you can play uh, when you're a, a modern sound is to do, to think of C, like melodic minor off the third of, okay. a, of, a, of a minor seven flat five chord. So thinking okay. this is really like C, C melodic minor. Oh, here's, here's Stella. Hey, here's Stella. Stella? That's really How you doing? Yeah, we're just watching your live stream. Are you watching it downstairs? Oh, <laughs> thank Especially you for watching. Cool. You say hi? <laughs> oh, we'll talk about slamming doors later. <laughs> I love she's, it. She's, uh, she's our special guest. She's always trying to get on everything we do live, which I, I think is great. That's funny. That's great. Trust I completely me, lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> look at two, number two. Look at right. number two. With, uh, so, somebody, someone told you something about. So, so the, the Locrian, yeah, the Locrian with a raised two. Um, uh -huh. of it being like a, a, a more modern sound uh -huh. for some reason. And I don't know where that came from, like what that... But that type of... Uh -huh. or, uh -huh. That type of... That raised okay. too, you know? Um, uh -huh. Okay, I gotta check that out, man. And, I gotta, and I gotta, you know... Yeah. 
I mean, it kind of makes sense if you go back to this Sam Jones bass line, but he's uh-huh. just, I think he's using, like, he's just in the, in the beat, in the pot. He's like moving. We're going to this D chord. It doesn't, you know, because later yeah. on he'll, he will play some, I swear he did play a B flat in there somewhere. It, not that it matters, you know, but, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the thought that brings that up is talking about Ron's line here, using the A flat in the chord. Yeah. You know. Right, right. Right. That, mm-hmm. that really, I think, you know, and you hear that like in the more like bebop players too, that flat nine on the, mm-hmm. on the half diminished chord. That's the sound that. That's, know, that's the sound. That's yeah. the sound, and 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 it's it it's always there, almost like that 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 sound. Yeah. I mean, yeah, mm. just knowing knowing what that is and being able to play it at a job or a dime. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Let's, let's check out this other Ron line. He does something real similar, but he's a big jump, so he starts off. That's just perfect. B. Yeah, it's just getting right to the B flat. That's perfect. Beautiful line, right? Yeah. Wow, that's 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 great. That's 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 a chorale right there, right? Right. You know what I mean, yeah. it had that, it it had up that from jump. That. It had that jump, but it it was, and it stayed there for a little bit, and it came back down. <laughs> Beautiful, right? <laughs> had a nice arc to it, right? Oh, that's Beautiful nice arc to it. Yeah. And that's 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 the ticket. Just a couple more of these because I, I love this. And this whole album is so super good. Um, this chromatic motion again. That yeah, little the half master, that chromatic the master thing. Of, the master of those pull-offs, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Master. <laughs> Just knowing where where he needs to put it, where hey. it's always perfect too, right? It's never always. like too much, man. I always, just, yeah, always, yeah. master. All right, just this last one, which kind of baffled me. He played an E flat on beat two, and I went back and double checked it, and I was like, he's definitely playing an E flat there, and I was like, well, it's Ron Carter. <laughs> Got to be right. Why is why? <laughs> <laughs> it was fit. And, 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 and did it sound good? Did it sound good? Of course it. <laughs> and, and and with with like deeper deeper investigation, it could have been influenced by what Bob James was playing, of course. Right. Or right. what's happening in I, I don't know, I don't remember if Chet was soloing or if Paul was, you know. Right. Uh, right. Paul was soloing, but there's a reason for that note. I know right, that right. that to be true. Every note that he's playing. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, there's always that that those those questionable notes. I mean, just like in in uh in in you know, something else with with uh, Sam Jones, he has some questionable major seven, so I think over minor chords or something like that mm-hmm. here and there. But mm-hmm. you know, that's music too. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> that's Absolutely. music too. It's like uh, it's a little rub, that little rub. It's like oh <laughs> that that okay yeah, and it it's gone. You know, for us, it's like oh. It perks up your ears a certain kind of way, you know. Sure. Whether you yeah. want that to be your playing or not, I don't know. But still, <laughs> for sure, for sure. But it was it was raw, also, right? That that rawness to it, like they did that take and they didn't think about it. They were like, move on, you know. They mm. moved right on, you know. As you can yeah. see, on that whole album, for the most part, it sounds like I mean they basically just played, you know. If they even rehearse, who knows, you know? Because a lot of arrangements, you know, they get to to the beginning or the end, they're like. What do we do? What are we going to end? And then, then it's done. You know, that kind of thing. Um, that's why I said about Hank Jones on that record. Uh, I feel like he he was a different player as as the years went on. Like he was even more, I mean, he was always masterful to the very end. But like he was even more adventurous. I felt like just maybe, you know, I guess the youth did that also. He was like so... I mean, he was like a master at a young age already, but mm-hmm. like the way he played was so, it's funny when, when I listened to it just now with, with, you know, I guess more mature ears, I had to go back and be like, wait, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's Hank Jones on, on this recording. I'm, wait, that, did mm-hmm. I, do I, let me check to make sure. It is Hank Jones, wow. So, you mm-hmm. know, I feel like fast forward 10 years later, he wasn't playing quite at like that, you know? 
Interesting. Um, yeah. From my ears, from my from the countless amounts of records I've I've listened to. So it was just some fresh, it was just different. Not to say it was any better or anything, it was just different, you know. Sure, so sure. um and, and talk about Sam Jones. He was one of those, if you follow his career, I felt like he was another one who kind of like got better, you know what I mean? Mm. Till the very end. Like he never really like old age or old, you know being you know sam d sam jones he never like dipped it was like he was still trying to figure it out until the end with billy higgins and cedar walton mm. those records mm. he it was like he sounded so strong even to when he you know which really inspires me when i when i listen to those records i could hear and even on this record i could hear he's a young sam jones and how he just kept on going kept on going kept on going you know uh it's 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 inspiring very inspiring yeah Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't stop searching. Yeah. No, no, Amazing. he didn't. Mm -mm. Very cool. Do you do you have a do you have a favorite or an up there Sam Jones recording that you would uh, want to share? Or oh, the Cedar Walton Trio stuff, of course. Oh, the Cedar Walton Trio. I mean, all the stuff with him and Higgins, uh, the live records they've done, um, Eastern Rebellion. Oh yeah. That group. Uh, but one of my all-time favorite records is is, is uh, Barry Harris live at uh, the Jazz Workshop, San Francisco. Ooh. Ooh. That's that's uh, that's classic Barry Harris, Sam Jones, Lewis Hayes. They're just, I mean, most of the record record is just. But the, the recording is 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 very clear. The bass is clear. It's raw. Barry is killing it. Hmm. And just the hookup between uh, Sam and and, um, and and Lewis Hayes, who obviously was a, one of the, the legendary uh, rhythm yeah. section teams, on that recording, I just it it every I listen to that every every few months. Wow. <laughs> I, I always come back to it because it still it has this thing, those tip, just the way it's 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 like I feel like it's a jazz trio one on one like. You should have that in your arsenal just to kind of listen what it is to like a good trio kind of playing together. You know, wow. it's a live recording. It's great. Beautiful. I mm. I have not made it to that one yet, but okay. I'm beginning well. today, going to check that one out right after this. That's yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I I love the cannonball cannonball recordings. You know, with Sam oh, and yeah. playing together. Of so course. so those many of those. Yeah, classic. No doubt. No so doubt. good. But the Barry Harris one, I've not heard yet. All right, so it's getting we're we're moving along in the time. Uh, I okay. wanted to hop over to the comments real quick and okay. check out uh, check out some of the live chat if that's cool. Yeah, I think I guess I can see that too. Can I? I don't know. Yeah, on the on the oh, right I side see. of the comments I see. there. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to, some of these are regular folks that check in. This is my buddy Mark. You go ahead. You go ahead. You yeah. know. Him. <laughs> we'll say hello real quick. What's up, Mark? How you doing? Good to see you. I hope I'm not mispronouncing this Malta, but I think Malta was the one that requested a minor 2-5 uh, session. Okay. Uh, All right, Malta. And, and here they are. It's so cool about Red Hot. Excellent. All right, we have too many comments today to get through all of them. I apologize if you write something. This one speaks the truth. So I'll nah, well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I don't know about that dude. Yeah, Josh. <laughs> I don't know about that dude. That's my buddy, Sean Simon. We met through Open Studio. Nice. Oh. This fellas got to breed love too. So if yeah. you have any questions. Ah, okay. Hey Ruben, would your class be useful for a starting jazzed jazz pianist? I Are think you can learn I think you can learn <laughs> from anything. It's funny. Uh I've been checking out I mean obviously we're privileged as open studio artists to kind of like be able to dab and see everything for free. <laughs> oh yeah. So I've been learning from just all the artists on on Open Studio. I've been che I've checked out some Steve Wilson, the great alto player. Uh I've checked out some Sean Jones, I've checked out some Jeff Keezer, I've checked out Hutch, I've checked out you guitar players. I mean, you can take yeah. something from everyone. Yeah. So Absolutely. that's a big big fat yes. <laughs> yes. Very you cool. Know? You know? And I you do know the same yeah, yeah. I mean, you There's you so might take a little courses. bit. You might take a lot. You might take a you know whatever. Just you know, just put the time in, and you you you'll be able to figure it out. I'm sure. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I think that's great. I, I get you know there's a, a we had some base, uh, some pianists on last week, 
that we're asking about, you know, like more bass related questions, you know, which I think is a really good thing. We need to have this conversation. It's no all doubt. just music. We're just playing different instruments. You exactly. know, so yes, exactly. we can be, you know, as bass players, mm -hmm. we can be learning horn mm -hmm. solos, harmony right. from pianists. Yeah how you know like how to you know how to play drums i'm raising that flag for the bass players let's not be complacent let's not be complacent guys gals let's absolutely. not be complacent let's do it absolutely <laughs> mm -hmm. all right sean is on here yo ruben my friend i mean gums said you guys are cousins Small yep. world. very much our first cousin we grew up together playing me and me and oh, Amin. Cool. we that's my, actually we just texted that yesterday actually that's weird yeah so oh, yeah cool. Yeah. Any advice on how to work on minor licks in 12 keys chromatically or in fourths? Big ears, big ears. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I've never been a lick kind of guy. You know what I mean? I, I mean, there, I gravitate towards things I've heard and they're probably licks probably also, you can call them licks, but things that I've heard probably morphed into my playing a certain kind of way. and. Uh, not many times would I actually listen to something. Oh, let me pick that out. Once in a while, yes. Early on, I should do it probably a little bit more. Now, I don't do it as much because I listen to so much music every day. I mean, like, probably that's probably the one thing I've done, like, very consistently since not being, you know, playing is listening to so much music. And it just goes into your pores and it has to come out. You know what I mean? It has to come out. Definitely, sp you know, spending the time learning some. You know, whatever. What if there's something that really resonates with you? Yes, you know what I mean. But for me personally, I can't say I I done the I've done it a whole lot. Not not in the past 15 years, definitely at least. You know, hmm. so. <clears throat> Lou is being very insistent here. You need to do an electric bass jazz chord. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave that for you. Lou. Uh, you know, I mean, it's funny. I, I, a lot of people don't even know I play, play electric bass. I, I, I used, there used to be one, there used to be a time where I used to play electric bass, and the people who knew me to play electric bass knew me to play electric bass, and then there were people who knew me to play upright bass. And those, those worlds never collided. Hmm. Until slowly people found out I played the other, and they're like, "Wait, you play, you play that? Oh, oh right. you play that?" And then all of a sudden, as time went on, the, the acoustic thing started to be my thing. Hmm. Only because as I started to say no to electric things, you know, no one knew that. You know, the more you say no, you you end up being the second, or the third, or fourth call because you <laughs> you can't make it, and so. Acoustic bass started to rule out, um, but uh, sorry, she used to rule, take over for my electric uh, calls. Um, yeah. But over the past five to ten years, I say it, it, things start to, to change again, and uh, but more more electric things she started to do behind the scenes, uh, mm. studio work and different projects I would do, but hard, not a whole bunch live, which is interesting. Um, but no, I think there's plenty of con plenty of content out there for electric bass, you know, <laughs> jazz courses. You know, I'm sure there's a lot. I mean, maybe one day I'll, you know, or Bob will, you know, we'll figure figure something out to to, to add to 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 the plethora of things that are there. But we'll we'll stay in our lane for now. It's, you know? That's a whole nother conversation, I think, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like the, the back and forth, you know, the role, you know, all that yes. situational type of stuff. No doubt. You know, how to be authentic. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Berry, what was that Chet Baker track? Um, I think we addressed that. So you probably left this before, but it's uh, Chet Baker. Uh, what was the name of that album? One more time. It's just escaping me. Uh, she got... Um... She was too good to me? Yeah, she was too, something like that. <laughs> something like that. But the track yeah. is Autumn Leaves. So everything we're calling from today, Bill, is from, from Autumn Leaves. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, yeah. Oh, and, and the next. See, that's why you go to the next comments. I'm, I'm still new to this here. So. Okay. Uh, here's, a, here's a repeat watcher. Edelson, what's up? How are you? I've been hearing a lot of people playing Autumn Leaves in E minor. I have my a guess of why that is. And I think it goes back to, to your alma mater, Ruben. It goes back. It goes back to the real book, right? The fake book or whatever, right? Right. That it was, it was uh, published in in E minor or in in E minor. Yeah, it was published in E minor, right? Yeah. yeah it's so. you know, uh, 
knowing it in a few different keys is okay, you know. But uh, sure. <laughs> just depending <laughs> on who, who you're playing with, played in that key, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I think it is interesting playing with some cats though, and they're like, okay, it's in E minor, right? And I was like, oh, okay, you learned it from from this, like, the old old school real book. Right. Okay, that that's right. cool. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> it's, it can be kind of telling <laughs> if you pick that key. Mm -hmm. All right, Luis, the natural B sounds pretty good on the A minor seven flat five. Mm -hmm. it doesn't sound as good. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's situational, you know, so mm -hmm. but I, I agree. I think, you know, obviously if Sam Jones can play mm -hmm. it and make it work, it's of course a mm -hmm. good note choice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's think. Dave Shepard, how helpful or harmful is it to think in terms of a G harmonic minor scale in this song? This is what you were talking about, right? Does that scale have a lot to do? I think we, I think you would already yeah, address we, that. We kind of covered that. Yeah, we kind of mm -hmm. covered that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. This is Chris, another repeat watcher. What's up, Chris? How are you? Ruben brings up a good point. G minor major seven versus G minor seven. I'm thinking scales. What scale over a minor major seven? Melodic minor would maybe be another choice. Melodic, right? depending on the color. Harmonic too. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right there, it has that major seven right there. You know, what I mean? right? <laughs> it's all there. It's all yeah. there. So you, you cover all your bases. Yeah, yeah. Put them, put them Pun both intended. in. Yeah. Pun intended. Pun <laughs> intended. You know. <laughs> put all of this in. Right, right, right. Put them all in there. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Sorry, I'm just digging through here a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. And again. Um, Please, everybody, you need to go check out this course right here. I'm just bringing this up again for people that are joining us later. Please check out Ruben's Jazz Baseline Basics Walking Course. Well, that's really... old now. They, they need to get the, they want some new stuff. Check, you got to check out Bob's course, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got you. Hold on. <laughs> I'm so slow on this. That's, that's like 20 check years old or something like that, right? There the you building. go. I can't do it. The building blocks of bass. You know, we do like everything from the ground up. How we... I like that picture, man. Thanks. But that, that that's really good too. You know uh, that you that you have that 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 course. I, I mean, that's one of those things that that breaks down a lot of. It, 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 there's a lot of holes in 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 bass players when they start, uh, especially playing jazz, because at what we got back to what we uh, pointed out like two or three weeks later after playing the bass, you. You, you stop playing gigs or you stop playing, at least you stop playing with people. And yes. and a lot of, um, I mean, I was a, definitely a culprit of that because I came from electric bass, I came from the Virgin Islands and I came, well, actually when I got to Berkeley, I didn't even own an upright bass yet. You oh, know? Wow. I didn't even own an upright bass. I wanted, I was aspiring to to to, uh, to um, have a, an instrument, but I couldn't afford it. Uh, and I got there and somehow, some good folks back home found the money for me and I got my upright bass for like my first year at Berkeley. You know what I mean? Wow. So there was a lot of technical things that I just didn't have together when I first started playing instrument. I had a, I had a lot of stuff under my hand, hum, you know, harmony and I had I had um <clears throat> a lot of jazz knowledge and I could naturally do it, but I just physically or technically couldn't play the instrument. But I still had a lot of work, a lot of opportunity, you know, um, and but I struggled for for many years. I mean, I feel like I've only shoot. I feel really like only in the past decade that I've really started to like hone some things technically because of the you know I had such a history. The, my foundation was so like uh, 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 because I had these all these opportunities right away because people were like okay. Decent sound, you can play the bass half decent, but we need that feel. So right. come on, let's get <laughs> play the gigs, you know. Yes, yes. And and that happens to all of us. And and luckily I, I had to, you know, you know, wherewithal to kind of like push through and still learn on the gig almost, you know what I mean? And try to figure out, you know, I mean, so what I'm getting at is that's that's great that you the building you know just knowing what the positions are just going through it like the details of the instrument and 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 what you're looking for to 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 get a great sound you know harmony all of it that's that's really I really appreciate you doing that 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 course 
Wow, Very definitely. Cool. Yeah, no, I, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a thing I noticed a hole for, like how to, how to stand even, how to hold the bass. You know, Very how to, simple how to things. How to get a sound, you know. Very simple things that, you know, I mean, I was, I mean, fortunate over the, over many years to kind of like get some tutelage, a little from Ron Carter, a little from Rufus Reed, a little from yeah. Whit Brown, a little for some classical players, because I, I seek that, you know, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't have a, a, a steady teacher all the way through, but I also felt I um, gained a lot of knowledge and uh, feedback from so many people that kind of like brought me into, you know, what, what you hear now, you know? Mm, so mm. it's very important, very important. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Bill, is, there's a lot of comments here. So I'm just kind of calling, mm-hmm. Bill is saying, love seeing Ruben with Charles Lloyd. My man, uh, yeah, I, I was just, I that. was just, in touch with him just now, man. We're going to do actually a, a, a concert in a couple of weeks, uh, wow. a virtual thing we, we're recording um, in a couple of weeks. That's going to, I think, be aired in January. Yeah. Yeah. My second gig since March. <laughs> wow. Hello. Oh, man. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that. I don't, don't want to cry. <laughs> I know, right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, and, um, yeah, that's that's we're, we've got more comments coming in, but you know I I, I don't want to keep you too long either, Ruben. You know we've already been on for about an hour, or so was um uh, was there anything else we wanted to talk about getting in getting out of here? I mean no, I mean we, we I'm sure we have we we're going to be in this for a while, so we'll have more time to get to some other stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean I could just grab a seat. We could we could hang here the rest of the day if you want. <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed this. This no, has been man, so much we, fun. It was it was great, man. Let's let's do it again. Definitely, we'll do we'll do some more of this. And uh, yeah, thanks thanks for the whole open studio. Thank you, Peter. team, and Good and morning. you know everyone everyone who's who's, who's supporting this and supporting Bob, supporting all of us. We we appreciate you all, and we're just trying to give the little bit of knowledge we have to um to better the whole jazz community. You know, it's yeah. it's so important, so important, and the. We, we we all learn from each other because we are eternal. Sorry, sorry. I hope this is it that we're forever students, all of us, right? And we're just Amen. sharing knowledge and passing it along as much as we know. I mean, you know, the the only thing that separates a lot of us, you know, is experience. We have a lot of experience, you know, and 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 we bring our our life lessons in the music, out of the music, to to the world. That's all. That's what it's all about. So I'm sure. Hopefully, one day I'll see Marco or Dave or Brian, uh, Lewis, and we can, you know, or Louise. I don't know how you say that, but you know, we can all s- share some some stories together, some bass stories, right? Back in person, yes. Yeah, the bass love, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Bass love, yeah. No doubt. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in today. Thank you mm-hmm. so much, Ruben, for being here yeah. today. So cool. Come join us again next Monday or any Monday you 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 know anytime you want to come you're most welcome so yeah man we'll we'll, we'll do it again for sure all right Beautiful. keep up keep up the great work Bob thanks so much Ruben good to see.